This is Bazaar Morning Call. Broadcasting live from the CNBC TV 18 Motilal Oswal Studios in Mumbai. Good morning. You're with us here on a fresh new edition of Bazaar Morning Call. Coming out of a midweek holiday, Thursday morning, we're coming to you as always from the CNBC TV 18 Motilal Oswal Studios. I am Prashant with me, my colleagues Nigel and Surbhi is here with us today. Guys, good morning. Good morning. So, coming back after a midweek break, but guys, it wasn't a you know break without news. There's so much yeah. of it, right? From the Federal Reserve to corporate action to regulatory action. Plenty to keep us busy this morning. That's right. So, let's get straight to the action, Prashant. Well, I think we'll have to start with the Fed, right? And yeah. uh, what's uh, happened or what's not happened. Uh, uh, so, <laughs> let's just begin by telling you what you need to know. The big headline is that there is no hawkish surprise as far as the U.S. Fed is concerned. Uh, and the reason I start by saying that is because at the margin, the fear was that the Fed essentially, because data has been so strong, it's been hot. I mean, the H word will come into the mix, the hike word, right? Uh, but nothing. Uh, the uh, Fed seemed more inclined and gave enough indications that uh, they want to cut rather than hike. Uh, nothing on hike. Now, Powell made reference, Fed Chair Powell made reference to rate cuts, but no openness to hike. I mean, actually, in the Q&A part of the uh, sort of event, after the rate decision statement read, readout, etc., in the Q&A, many journalists looked like they had come prepared to ask that hike question, and they put it to uh, the Fed Chair, but he, he did not bite. Uh, and he kind of stuck to the fact that, uh, you know, uh, the rate cuts perhaps are the more likely path. Uh, the, uh, this is one thing. On the, in the prepared statement, uh, he, they did remove the explicit guidance towards rate cuts this year. Uh, and uh, this is a change. Maybe you can read it as a bit of ho hawkishness, etc. Uh, but that is what has happened. The other bit, of course, is QT, quantitative tightening, right? I mean, uh, the balance sheet runoff was happening at, uh, uh, you know, at, at $60, $65 billion. Now, that has been cut down, which means at the margin that is dovish. Uh, so there is rates, but there is also what they do with the balance sheet. And in the balance sheet, nothing has been done on rates. They've said and they've maintained that rate cuts perhaps are the more likely first action. But on balance sheet, what they've done is maybe a little more dovish as compared to what was expected. It was not completely unexpected. So it's all good as far as the overnight FOMC action is concerned. Uh, U.S. markets last night sold off in the last 30 minutes of trade, and they were down about only a third of a percent. But, I mean, you're reacting to two days' cumulative worth of price action. So, S&P was down, I mean, over the last two sessions, is down 1.9. Uh, that is Tuesday and Wednesday. NASDAQ is down about 2.4% uh, or so. I mean, uh, big swings every day for, the, for yields and for the dollar, right? I mean, uh, 7, 8 basis points higher on Tuesday, 7, 8 basis points lower last night. So, unchanged. For the 10-year, unchanged. For the dollar, unchanged as well. So, 4.62 on the 10-year. Dollar index, about 105.7, 105.7. Uh, five or so in that uh, vicinity. Uh, the other thing is the USD JPY, right? I mean, the, the, the yen has been weakening. It hit 160, uh, and it was about 158. And from 158, it's moved to 154 in a couple of hours. Uh, and it's moving wildly, as you can see. We're back at about 156 or so. And there is some hint, there is some talk that uh, the Bank of Japan and the Ministry of Finance in Japan are intervening to stabilize the currency now. I mean, last week, of course, the, the BOJ was uh, dovish. Uh, and that uh, came as a surprise to many. The other big story for us is the massive slide in oil prices. Prices went down 5%. Uh, and uh, oil was looking like it was comfortably in an uptrend. It's not as if uh, something dramatic is happening. If you believe that this price rise or uh, there was a geopolitical premium which was built, it's not as if the war has ended or anything. Uh, but there's a big slide. And I didn't see any big noteworthy data as well. So we'll see. But this is, I mean, if this stays, if it sticks, if it builds on this slide from last night, I think it's going to be a positive for many stocks, many sectors here, which we will talk about. Just where, do we, uh, where does all of this leave us? Just to tie in the levels here. So on Tuesday, which is the last session, we saw a sharp slide from the highs and starting at about 2.30 p.m. I mean, that last one hour really changed, the, changed how the day looked like. Uh, I looked at institutional data. There was not very much. I mean, FIR has bought about 1,000 plus crores in the cash market, and that's the, I mean, the largest number since, I think, the 10th of April or so. But on the FNO side, it's more pronounced. So on Monday, as of Monday, there were about a lack of contracts short in index uh, futures. On Tuesday, when we came in, there were about 45,000 contracts short. And they are long now, net long, 16,400-odd contracts as far as the index futures uh, are concerned. So interesting there. Now, uh, the low of 22,385 is the first marker, which should not break. If there is any more correction, 22,400 is a line in the sand. 
The 20-day comes in around there at about 22,443. So these are levels which the market must hold. On the upside, of course, I mean, it's new highs, right? We already took 22,775 out on Tuesday before that sell-off. Uh, so upside levels are clear. Bank Nifty nearly hit the 50,000 mark on Tuesday and then had that big dramatic sell-off. So that's, of course, the, tar the, the target on the upside. The 20-day for the Nifty Bank stands at 48,000. 183. We left off at 49,400 or so. I think generally speaking, I mean, the cues are positive, right? Uh, uh, the Fed is not uh, hawkish. Oil prices have seen a sharp sell-off and the, the, the dollar has cooled off after sort of getting to about 106.2. We are well under it this morning. So it's not a, I mean, if you get a start, which is about 25, 30 odd points higher, I think they, you, I mean, there is an opportunity to build on it uh, you don't want a big gap up opening because that kind of takes this juice out right at the word go. But 27, 30 points, I think uh, you, you'd be able to see more uh, on the upside with these supports, with these stops in mind. Uh, yeah, Prashant, absolutely. I mean, uh, I guess the Fed was a bit of a non-event, barring what they said on the on the balance sheet, that they won't be sort of uh, you know moving at the same pace as before in terms of... Uh, unrolling that balance sheet or basically sort of uh, dialing back a little bit. Uh, a lot of the Asian markets are positive this morning. Hong Kong's opened up, uh, you know, with a gain of over 1, 1.5%, 1 1.25 to be precise, Singapore's positive. So we've got some positive cues coming in from Asia. Uh, by the way, we've also made it successfully through four months of this calendar year. So congratulations to everybody for that. So it just got me thinking, let's take a look at price action over uh, April and the divergence between India and the US is very, very pronounced and very clear because the US market has faltered. The key indices are down anywhere between 4% to 5%, but the Indian market has taken off. Uh, the Nifty, relatively speaking, is at least up uh, just under a percent, but the bank Nifty, that's been the story of April with that gain of 3.8%. Now, was uh, Tuesday's big volatility on the bank Nifty an aberration? That's something that we're going to debate and discuss as we go along. But in terms of uh, data points, just to put uh, some more numbers on the table, uh, positive cues this morning. The fall in rent, which Prashant has mentioned, down 3 3 3.5% overnight. The U.S. stockpile buildup is quite a bit. Geopolitical noise is sort of tapering off to some extent. There's a lot of talk about brokering a peace on Gaza as well. So that helped oil prices cool off. Another positive macro for us is the GST number. We have crossed 2 lakh crores in GST collections in April. That's a huge jump. I mean, I just put up the last couple of months' data as well for reference because we were clocking 1.6, 1.7 lakh crores per month. Suddenly, it's notched up to over 2 lakh crores. So that's another uh, sort of good point that's coming through. We've got a lot of auto sales numbers. We'll tell you more about it as we go forward. Short point is the picture is very muddled. There's no clear, one clear trend that's playing out. That's the, of course, FII and DII number. Big positive number for, uh, for Tuesday. But FIIs are still net sellers. 8,600 crores of net sell in April. So... Uh, let's see if this is the start of a new trend, the AFIA buying that we got on Tuesday. Very, very important to track. On auto sales, as I was mentioning, Maruti's numbers are sputtering along. The growth was lower than estimates, but TVS has done really well. Hero has done really well. On the CV side, something that I was tracking very closely because, again, you know, a barometer for the economy, uh, the numbers from Tata Motors look very good. The CV sales are up 30%. But, uh, you know, if you look at Aisha, their CV numbers are quite poor, a decline of 18%. So really muddled on auto sales. Just very quickly, the stocks in focus today for me, uh, two sets. On one side, it's going to be Kotak Mahindra Bank and Federal. We all know the news by now. Uh, Mr. Manian quitting his joint MD. By the way, Federal Bank is holding a press conference at 2 o'clock. That becomes a really important uh, sort of, you know, uh, time that you want to track as well. Let's see what Federal officially has to say on all the buzz around Mr. Manian moving to Federal Bank. And the second, of course, is going to be the Godrej Group because of the family settlement contours now becoming official. Watchpoint is going to be Godrej Properties for me, really, because A, all the Vikroli land has moved to Godrej and Boyce, which is the unlisted entity, the, the, you know, the other side of the family. And the non-compete says that uh, you know, they can still compete in uh, real estate. There's no non-compete over there. So, I mean, will we have two separate companies on real estate from both sides of the family? So, for me, Godrej Properties is going to be a watchpoint. Just ending with the, today's results, lots of uh, interesting mid-caps in focus. Federal, of course, apart from the, the big you know, management issue, there's uh, the result press meet as well, Dabur, Coal India, Blue Star, Seattle. So lots of uh, interesting numbers to keep us busy. Well, that's right. You know, on Tuesday, we were seeing that the markets were running away and then we saw that big intraday drop. You know, in the Nifty Bank, that could be a technical factor that did play out out there because you had the Nifty Bank as well as the Nifty Financial Services Index that played out the weekly expiry as well. So that could explain part of the reason because as you all mentioned, no big scare coming in from the institutions. The FIs, in fact, were buyers out there. So did the markets preempt some kind of negative news on that 
one day holiday that we had. Well, if that was the case, then part of the bad news or most of the bad news is in the price. So I would view that positively. The, you know, the other part that makes me a little bit sketchy is the FI gross long positions are now at 2 lakh contracts. As I mentioned repeatedly, I like some shots in the system, but now the FIs have got net long. How did that happen? Well, if you look at the addition on Tuesday's trading session, they added longs, they covered shots. Now they're net long with 52% of their positions on the long side. And look at the swing factor. We were net short on the, the FIs were net short with 45,000 contracts on the short side. Well, that's turned around and now they are 16,000 net long. So that's a 60,000 contract swing. But this is the net position. I wanted to focus a little bit on the gross uh, uh, long positions. Now in Tuesday's trading session, they added 47,000 long contracts. That's the highest that I've seen in more than a year. So that's point number one. The second factor is the overall two uh, positioning on the gross long side is two lakh contracts. I haven't seen that in more than a year. So that's the highest that we've seen in recent terms in terms of the FI gr gross long positions. What are the supports uh, you're looking at on the Nifty? I think this market is still pretty much in an uptrend. And as I mentioned on Tuesday morning as well, the Nifty is headed to around 23,000. The Nifty Bank is headed to around 50,000 odd. So I think you need to build on to your long positions with the supports that come up for you on the screen. On the Nifty, the 22,200 is important. And on the Nifty Bank, we have the crucial levels on the downside. Two set of stocks I'm tracking. One is the OMCs and IOC in particular. The stock fell off the cliff post the numbers coming in on Tuesday's trading session. But it ended closer around, you know, still holding around the 20 and the 50 DMA. So technical levels as well, it's holding around those levels. And I'll watch out for all the OMCs because all of them sold out uh, in, uh, you know, in Tuesday's trading session, but Brent crude prices are lower, so maybe they're in for a bit of a bounce back. The other stock I'm looking at is Moil. It's already seen a rally of more than 30% in the last one month or so. And now there's news that's come in that they've increased prices by 25 to around 40%. Todd, we here at CNBC TV18 had alerted at much lower levels that going by the global supply, uh, you know, uh, scenario, because there is a deficit coming in there, there could be a possible price hike, and that's precisely what's happened. So after it opens up in the green, I'll be interested to see what happens from there. All right, uh, Nigel, thanks very much. Those are all the cues that we've uh, put out on the table. Plenty to track this morning. Let's get started. And of course, uh, we're going to run you through the equity call of the morning, get you a couple of views that are uh, coming in bright and early. And the call that uh, we've got for you is coming in from CLSA on equities. Eric Fishwick of CLSA says that the Fed left rates unchanged, which was a given. However, he adds that uh, the Fed did indicate that it will start to moderate the pace of quantitative tightening. He says the FOMC statement explicitly flagged that the improvement in inflation had stalled and that it would take longer for the Fed to feel confident that inflation was on a secure trajectory towards 2%. However, he adds that the Fed did not open the door to the possibility of rates being raised. And this was backed up in Powell's Q&A session. In aggregate, Eric says this was a less hawkish pivot than many in the market expected. And the Treasury curve has shifted downwards in consequence. Well, let's get you some market uh, money market views as well. Parul Mittal Sena of Standard Chartered Bank says that the USD INR had a slow drift higher in the previous week driven by month and import demand and FBI outflows. She says FOMC outcome and Powell's press statements were in line with market expectations. She thinks the INR could outperform in the near term given forex reserves are near all-time highs and positive INR fundamentals. She expects the pair to trade in a range of between 83.25 to 83.75 to the dollar in the week ahead. Okay, on bonds, Parul says India rates were range-bound during the week due to the lack of domestic triggers. She says Powell indicated that FOMC might hold rates longer than its earlier expectation. However, this was broadly in line with market expectations. She adds that markets will look forward to the US non-farm payrolls data, which comes out on Friday for further cues. She's expecting the 10-year benchmark bond deal to trade in a range of 7.1 to 7.2% in the near term. Well, we've got a lot of stocks uh, to track for you in our special top 10 segment. So we've narrowed it down to 10, but there are plenty of more stocks. Let's run you through the list. Hero Motor Corp, Chola Mandalam, we have Indus Stars, Adani Wilma, Havels, India Mart and Five Star Business. All of them will be reacting to positive news flow. On the flip side, Kotak Mahindra Bank, Ambuja Cements and Maruti will be under some pressure, so likely to open up in the red.